How's it going everybody out there? I'm the epic Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. Now I'm a big fan of the Castlevania series, but one thing I hardly ever see anybody talk about are games that could really get people into being Castlevania fans. Everybody's always talking about the classics and some of the bigger games that are like iconic at this point, but nobody really discusses what games can make somebody a fan of Castlevania. So for this top five, I'm gonna give you my picks for the best Castlevania games to give to someone that's a beginner, someone that's not really a fan of the franchise, but will hopefully become one. So let's kick things off with this list starting at number 5. Castlevania Lament of Innocence now I know this isn't the most ideal place to get into the series, nor is it the only 3D Castlevania game, but I think this is better than the others for beginners. Castlevania Lament of Innocence tells the story of Leon Belmont, the very first guy to use the name Belmont and the first to fight against Dracula. There's a lot of reasons for this, but the TLDR is that Leon wants to save his beloved Sarah from being turned into a vampire after she's kidnapped by a guy named Walter. We get to see the creation of the famous Vampire Killer Whip and many other aspects about the Belmonts that become important later on. There's a lot more that happens, but this all leads up to a surprising reveal at the end of the game that this was also an origin for Dracula. It's pretty wild and sets up everything in the plot of the series, despite being a little bit too convoluted in some places. But as a game focusing on the first Belmont, Lament of Innocence is a good start to see the beginning of the ongoing war between Dracula and the Belmonts. As a 3D Castlevania game, however, I feel that this is a better choice to start out with. Some people will say that Castlevania Lords of Shadow is a better option, but to me that game is more of like a spin-off series that tries way too hard to be like a God of War game. This all comes down to personal preference, but if I had to make a choice to recommend to new fans that was trying to get into the series, I'd definitely say go with Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow now everybody will tell you to play Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and for very good reason. And yet I feel many parts of Symphony of the Night might not click with everybody, especially for new players without any prior knowledge of it. But that's where Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow comes in. It's a more streamlined and straightforward version of the gameplay that one would get in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but delivered in a different way. You still have the platforming and exploration of Dracula's castle, the light RPG elements, and much more. It's all the good parts of Symphony of the Night's gameplay without becoming too overwhelming and overly complicated for someone new to the series. There's also a light collection aspect in the form of souls that you can gather, which tie into different abilities you could acquire over the course of the game. The plot is set many years after Castlevania Symphony of the Night, with Dracula's castle appearing over Japan, so the game could get into some pretty weird territory. The game is also a sequel to Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, which follows a new hero named Soma Cruz and his connection to the Belmonts and Dracula himself. Not the best game of the series, but it could be a good introduction to the Metroidvania style of games for the franchise. Speaking of which... <laughs> Castlevania Aria of Sorrow Another game that follows the Metroidvania formula, this is the first game that follows Soma Cruz and the predecessor to Dawn of Sorrow. Like I mentioned before, everything here is pretty much a more streamlined version of the gameplay that you would get in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. But the reason why I put Aria of Sorrow higher on the list is because it feels a little bit more straightforward than its sequel. This is one of my favorite games on the Game Boy Advance and it helped spark a lot of my interest in Castlevania overall. After finishing it, I went back and played Symphony of the Night and other games in the series. I feel like this is a solid choice to give to any new player as an introduction of the Metroidvania style titles without harping too much on the difficulty or the vastness of other games. Over the years, my opinions about Castlevania Aria of Sorrow have changed, which you can see in my full review I did on Castlevania Aria of Sorrow here on the channel. I'm just saying, people. But I still recommend this game to anybody looking to get into Castlevania games for the first time. It's Metrovania as it's known, but dialed back a little bit to ease you into everything that it has to offer. Now you gotta understand for a second, this isn't a list of the best Castlevania games around. That's an entirely different discussion, and I'll probably get to that list one day. What we are talking about, however, are games that we could give to a newcomer, someone who's never played Castlevania before, or has never really cared for the franchise as a whole. What are the games you could give to them that'll allow them to experience some of the better aspects of Castlevania without all the complicated stuff that comes from those other games, even though they might be better in some respect? At least with all the games that I've listed so far, you could give this to anybody and they could pretty much enjoy it. They could at least get the main idea that you're going against Dracula or kind of dealing with all these other elements, the Belmont clan, stuff that I feel like is basic and standard for the franchise, but again, more of like a surface level thing to kind of introduce them to the franchise. But with that being said, this does come with some honorable mentions that I want to give a little shine to. These are games that didn't really kind of make the list, but I still at least want to tell you guys about them and give a little bit of food for thought. So let's take a look at a couple of them. Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. 
A new type of adventure with a new type of hero, but one that maintains a good balance between the old style and the new style gameplay of the series. It's an interesting one that has a lot of good stuff to it, and one that I feel like a lot of newcomers are really going to enjoy, especially if they're going to get the best of both worlds. Castlevania Lords of Shadow a unique and interesting reboot of the series that spins off from the main timeline and tries to emulate other modern games, but it still maintains a few elements of the traditional series, with both the Belmonts and Dracula still being the center point of the story. Castlevania Bloodlines if you want a great 16-bit rendition of the older gameplay style from Castlevania, but still want it to feel somewhat new and interesting, then Castlevania Bloodlines is right up your alley. I reviewed Bloodlines on the channel recently and had a lot of praise for it. You should definitely watch it after this video. I'm just saying people, you should check it out and then subscribe. Anyway, I feel like this isn't just a great game for the Sega Genesis, but it's also a great introduction to the franchise. Now don't get me wrong, the game is pretty challenging and will frustrate newcomers a few times, but I think the combination of the presentation, simple controls, and over the top moments in the game will keep everybody engaged. If you've never played Castlevania Bloodlines before, I highly suggest that you check it out in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection and experience it for yourself. It hasn't gotten a lot of re-releases, but that's the best way to play it right now. It's straight up pure Castlevania that's fun, furious, and will lead you into playing all the other games in the series. And the number one best Castlevania game for beginners is... Super Castlevania 4. This in my opinion is the best game to give to someone who has never played any Castlevania game. Forget about all the crazy Metrovania stuff, forget about all the crazy plots that never end. This right here is just straight up pure Castlevania action. Solid controls with fun gameplay and a nice level of challenge. Those are the key characteristics that sum up what the Castlevania franchise really is. And in my opinion, no other game conveys that to new players as well as Super Castlevania 4. I picked this over the original Castlevania on NES for a couple reasons. Once again, I reviewed this game on the channel before, so you should definitely check it out and see all the details about it. But to sum things up, Super Castlevania 4 is a remake of the original game on NES, one that expands upon the foundation of what made that game such an iconic classic. Simon Belmont journeys into the unknown to destroy Dracula, using nothing more than his vampire killer whip, some sub-weapons, and quick reflexes to fight the forces of darkness. It's as simple as you could possibly get with the series without falling into more obscure territory and complicated aspects that will escape players who are unfamiliar with any Castlevania game. It also helps a lot that the game looks and sounds great for a Super Nintendo game. There's no RPG elements or any other aspects that ended up being revolutionary for the franchise later on, but as far as conveying the true essence of what Castlevania actually is, this is the top game that everybody should play if they want to get into the series. I feel like after playing this, you'll appreciate a lot of what came later on for the series and understand their significance. If you want to get into Castlevania in any way, then you definitely need to play Super Castlevania 4 when you can. When you really break things down and look at this from the perspective of someone that's never really played a lot of Castlevania before, Super Castlevania 4 is the best choice out of the bunch. Everything from the controls, the visuals, the music, the fact that it's a remake of the very first NES game, everything about this just mixes well and a really solid choice to give to someone that's a beginner to the Castlevania franchise. I feel like this should be your first choice of game to really kind of see the better aspects of the entire series. Now I understand a lot of people would say, oh JJ, you should go tell them to play the NES Castlevania or any of the other classics from both the PlayStation or the Game Boy Advance or the DS. The reason why I don't think that's the best choice for someone that's a brand newcomer to the series is because there's so many other complicated aspects and difficulty spikes for those games that are very non-noob friendly. Now I understand I'm not saying those games are bad I think that some of them are some of the greatest games of all time as you've seen in some of my reviews on this channel but if we're talking just games for newcomers games that we can introduce like our sibling or maybe our girlfriend or boyfriend to the series you know to get them into playing it with us I feel like these five games and more specifically Super Castlevania 4 are the best choice choices out of the bunch. But there you go everyone, those are my top 5 picks for the Castlevania games to introduce to newcomers or beginners. I feel like not enough people really talk about this stuff, especially in relation to the Castlevania series. But those are just my opinions about all these Castlevania games, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Tell me, what are some of your favorite Castlevania games, which Castlevania games did you play first, what are the Castlevania games that you introduced to your friends and your siblings and your family relatives, all that stuff. Put all that stuff down below in the comment section. 
Thanks for watching this video, everyone. Make sure you guys check out some of these other videos in the boxes after the credits, and don't forget to visit my Patreon page via the annotations for more exclusive content. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Peace out, and stay epic, everybody. Yeah.